I was in the car club and then I moved up here a couple of years out of high school and I just you know, I was hanging up on Lake Street, which was a main drag, and I met guys up there, and pretty soon it's back into another car club here, and uh, the guys that I hung out with, I started racing, and the guys I hung out with were the guys that started the, uh, the Street Ride Association, okay. MSRA. Really? Minnesota Street Ride Association. They puts on the Back to the 50s program. Wow. So if I'd have stayed, because I had a street rod at the time, I had a 32 Ford with a Pontiac motor in it. I ended up trading that with a guy that had a 34 Ford with a injected Chevrolet in it. We just swapped cars because I decided I thought I should be a racer. <laughs> and he, as it worked out, I ran quicker and faster in the car the first day I had it than he had run. So I thought, oh, I'm, I'm going to be a star. <laughs> He's part of Doc Halliday's team. Uh, Doc Halliday runs the Telstar Funny Car. That's what this whole documentary is about. Uh, he's run a nostalgia class, so it means a lot of things like 671 Supercharger Limited, that sort of thing. Um, Kenny's been on the team for how many years? 14. 14 years. So why don't you tell us what your job is here? My job is essentially to complete teardown and rebuild when we're at the shop. When we're here at the track, I organize the chaos, and I also set up the clutch. So, with the clutch, Doc Holliday has always been noted for getting down the track, no matter what the conditions are. Yep. You set the clutch up pretty light? Yeah, I set it up soft, depending on the track, depending on where we're at. Here, we're going to set it up soft, because the track conditions aren't the greatest. Once I traded for the uh, for this 34 Ford, then it was racing from then on. And eventually, I drove for different guys because um, the opportunity was there to race for somebody, and you didn't have to spend your own money. That was a blessing. <laughs> <clears throat> what were the tracks that were around around you there? Well, we had uh, Twin City Drag Strip, okay. which was over here on the north side, and then we had uh, Minnesota Dragways. 
in Minnesota, Dragway was bringing in a lot of a lot of cars for match races. I mean, Garlitz would be there, and and uh, Perdome, and um, and then I ran with Charlie, ran his car up here at, before back when it was in Papua and Charger was when I was driving for him. So then we ran at Minnesota Dragways and stuff. Okay. Is that? And I, I'm not familiar with that name. Is that name still? Does that track still exist? No. 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 It got. It was in the middle of place called Anoka basically and you know everybody moved in around it you know. and then the noise thing and all of a sudden it was gone so and then they fortunately about that time frame they built uh, Brainerd so then Brainerd became my home track okay. you know so because I started in top fuel dragsters okay. front engine cars so and the car the one that's on the wall over there, the picture on the wall over there, the Hoover car. I actually drove that um, several times after Tom went to Funny Cars with Bill Shifsky. Then I drove the car for his mom and dad. Okay. And then his dad being George. Hoover. George Hoover, Everybody right? George yeah, Hoover. George Tom and Mon Pa Hoover was what they were called. Yeah. And. I remember George being out there at national events, being what eighty in his. Oh head, yeah, still working on that car. Yeah, yeah, he was a character. Yeah. I mean, and he would call me right in the middle of, in the winter time. He'd call me. He's like, "What are you doing this weekend?" I'm like, "Where are you at, George?" Well, I'm in California. I want you to come out and drive my car. Can you get a plane ticket and fly out? Well, those days you could walk up and buy a plane ticket. Yeah. No problem. Okay, I'll pick you up at the airport on Friday. We're going to go to Fremont and race. <laughs> okay. <Jeez. laughs> so just it just was crazy and fun and stuff going on. So then the funny cars started being popular and and uh, Bill Shifsky built the Cox Pinto cars. And one of the kids that actually worked on us worked on the dragster with us ended up driving that. His dad helped Bill put the car together and stuff. The kid went and drive so. So Randy drove the first year, and then for some reason, he had business commitments or something, Randy didn't want to do it anymore. So then I went back to driving Bill's car. So I drove his, his white Pinto car, the Cox car, and then the yellow one too. And then we just all kind of moved around, and then I started building my own car. of uh, Doc Halliday's team here, turns the wrenches, gets his car to him, and uh, as Doc Halliday said, he's one of the best, uh, knows how to get a car down the track. Why don't you tell us what you got here? Well, you wanted to know where, when I started, yeah. and I started at Union Grove in uh, 1961 with a 55 Chevy, but uh, by 62 I was hanging out with these guys right here, a uh, twin engine Chevy dragster called Engines Unlimited from the uh, Hot Rod Shop of Milwaukee. And uh, so I actually really started with dragsters right away. Okay. And then uh, in uh, 63, I uh, were with these guys. This is where I got my start in nitro, mixed my first nitro in 63. This was a small block Chevy on nitro. Okay. And this is where I met Doc, because Doc came here, he had a small block Chevy injected. And that's when I first met Doc. 1963? 1963, wow. yeah. And uh, of course we ran a lot of races, Minnesota, Rockford, a lot of places yeah. in those days. And then uh, <clears throat> this is the car I ran, worked on in 64 and 65. And this car still holds, got retired, the uh, number five 
position on the Drag News Mr. Eliminator list oh, really? was the biggest deal in the 60s because there was no national events or yeah. anything like yeah. that. So, so this car uh, was one of the first cars in the Midwest to run over 200 and one of the first cars to run in the 7s. And it was a brand new garlic chassis with an injector to pan Chris Karamasinas engine. Okay. So it, it, Is that you driving? No, never drove. Okay, you never, never drove. drove. Just nope, two. No, no. And, uh, well, this I was just a tire wiper, as they called them in those <laughs> days.
My first funny car was built by Don Ness, who was the pro stock guru. Yeah. And he built the funny car for me with the Plymouth Arrow body on it. Okay. So that's, and then, you know, then Charlie came up and started working on my car. And so then he was working on that. We ran that car for, I think we ran maybe a couple of years. And then he retired. And then it just moved on to uh, Bill Shifsky took over and started tuning my car and we ran his car and my car together almost like team cars. And then from there it went to Jerry Newman came on board and uh, I'm going to say it was probably their early 80s. And because he moved here from Milwaukee and because he was working here so it kind of was a natural progression. And, and then we stayed on together until I pulled the plug on my car and I think it was 91. It just, the cost was going crazy. And then they came out with a nostalgic car and Jerry and I happened to be in uh, Pomona one year at the same time and we were hanging around talking. He said, he said something about this nostalgia thing, you know. And I said, well, that would be kind of fun, you know, because you, you never quite lose that need for speed. So we, I said, you know, if, and I said, I still have the old chassis, which was sitting up underneath that body upstairs. So he said, if, uh, I said, if, would you be interested in doing it? And I said, because, you know, I don't tune anything. Yeah, yeah. I said, all right. So I went over to uh, one of the guys that was selling bodies and ordered my first Plymouth Arrow body right there on the spot. And that started it all again. <laughs> that was in 2000. Seven, I think.
competing in the nostalgia races like out in the West Coast? Did you guys? We never went to the West Coast with no. it. Jerry and I had done that that back to back wall to wall races. When we retired from running the the Daytona cars in ninety one, we were running anywhere from twenty three to twenty eight races a year. So we'd done that nonstop crazy stuff. So we wanted to do something just to have some fun at it and not have to be on the road all the time. And so we decided we'd just stay in the basically in the Midwest with it. Okay. And that's what we've done. We run uh I think Probably well, we went to Tulsa one year in Norwalk, uh, and we at that time when we did those, we we're running both cars, okay. the, the Hoover Showtime car and my car, and uh, Brian Stewart came on to drive um, the Showtime car, so we put he bought a big trailer, so we had a trailer we could put both cars in, and we ran everything out of one trailer. Did you guys just did you guys set it up as a match race between that... we did some match racing against each other and we did some races like in Tulsa was a uh, was an open show okay. um, I don't forget it was might have been a DRO race or something okay. and so then we would just take both cars there and run them and um, but it that, and that was kind of fun running a two car team for a while because you read about it see yeah. about it but so we did that. We ran 13 races that year, wow. and that was like, eh, I don't know if we want to run that many anymore. It's, uh, well, and it's hard to have enough guys to race anymore. Yeah. It's, you know, back when we were in our heyday, every every kid on the block wanted to come and work on a car. <laughs> and then this is a car I built in '69. John Butera, yep. and uh, it, it was a beautiful car. We had everything either polished or anodized or whatever, yep. and uh, we ran NHRA uh, division races in those days, yep. and, and UDRA. So, uh, and then <clears throat> this is my rear engine car we built in '72. Yeah, before you go there, the Butera car. When was that thing built? It was it was built in uh, the the winter of. Uh, over the winter of 68 into 69. Okay. And uh, John had left for California. Yep. I tuned John's car at Indy that year in 68. Okay. And then John made most of the pieces for this car and then Dennis welded it together. Well, I know I talked to, to Don Ewald and he's, yep. he actually got the last front engine dragster chassis that Butera built here in Wisconsin. But that was John's car. Yeah. John built that for himself. Or, I'm sorry, did I say John? I meant, no, no, no. Yeah, that's right. right. John built, did build it. You're and right. And then he took it to California right. with him, and then he sold it to Ewald. You're right about that. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and then this was uh, 72 and uh, 73 and 74 rear engine car. I love the old tower still standing yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, of course, the talk had been about tall wings, but this is in 1972. Yeah, so. that's, that's early. Oh, yeah. Way early. Way early, yeah. And uh, and then it was that car was quite successful in '73. Um, we won the Division Three championship. That's when you still ran points races with your nit nitro cars. And then NHRA had the East and West Conference in those days, and we finished number two in the United States well, in the Eastern Conference. How long have you been with uh, Doc Halliday? Since about 2014. And you just told me that uh, you were part of the Showtime crew before that. Yeah. And after that car got hung up, you then I transferred over. Transferred to Doc. Transferred over. Yeah. So, tell me about the first time you saw Doc run. I was 15 years old and seen him out of Thunder Valley Dragways. So that was the first time I'd seen him. So. What cool. do you do on race day? What? How do you participate in the race team? Just set up the the camp. You know, the whole camp. The getting the car out. And, Fill all the oil and fuel and okay. stuff like that. I saw that when you guys do a warm up, you guys actually drop the oil after the warm up um, and then re put new oil back in it. Yeah. What is the reason for that? Uh, because that uh, nitro is, you know, gets into that oil and you want to get that out of there so you got clean oil. You got clean oil after you do a warm up.
Watch for the fire from the stacks as he gets it back up.
H AHRA title in uh, 86. Who were some of the racers in that that you had to beat throughout the season? John Force. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, John Force was a bit of a mess back in those days. Well, he, no, he had Austin working oh, for him. Austin oh, yeah, he already had Austin working for him. Yeah, right, yeah. You yeah. About that. yeah. Yeah, Austin was already there, so. <laughs> but uh, we were we were really pretty good on slippery tracks, you know, because you go to an NHRA race, you know, there was so much track prep that you could throw everything at it you had. Yeah. You go to some of the tracks, and you know we were used to because we ran a lot of match race tracks. Where, you know, they didn't have a crew to do all this track prep and stuff, so you had to become ready. And we probably didn't make as much horsepower as them guys did anyway. So sometimes it was an advantage. <laughs> you run them soft and just get down the track. Get down the track, and sometimes that's all you needed. Um, who was so AHRA sanctioning? Um, I'm assuming most of the cars that were running there came out of, you know, NHRA, were part of the NHRA tour already at that point. Oh yeah, they were all, they were, most of them were guys that had been out running around. They did a lot of match racing. They ran NHRA races and, and of course that, uh, running the NHRA races helped us because then the other tracks wanted to buy us in because they knew we had, people knew who we were. We weren't, just didn't come out of the woodwork, so. Yeah. What, what NHRA races did you did you try to make it to on a regular basis or wasn't? Did, wasn't well, I didn't have a regular other. We'd go to Brainerd, but uh, because it was close. But I'd run Gainesville and I ran Houston and I've run. I was the first car. I was the first nitro car to ever run that track in Houston. Oh really? It wasn't. They weren't even done building it. They had me there for a press day and and uh, the owner uh, asked me. He said, "Well." Would you go do a burnout tonight? Because we had a press conference on a Wednesday night, and I was going to be there with a the match race for Ho with Hoover on on uh, Saturday night, and we were in there early. So, yeah, we'll do that. So, Jerry said, "Well, I told him we'd do it like a dry dry leave or something." He said, "Just how just do whatever it feels good." So. I drove it to about three quarter track. I went. I ran two hundred miles an hour on the first time down that track. Oh really? So I clicked it off a little early, but it, I mean it ran good down through there. So. Well, I mean, it, it, unlike today, you know, track prep back, back then was nothing like it is. Oh, today. nothing like it is today. No, but it was. I mean, it was all brand new. It was nice and smooth, and uh, the lights were phenomenal. You know, because we did it at night for a press deal, and they were all hopped up because we had all the big fire and stuff coming out of it. <laughs> so that was, so I was the first one to go down there. I was the first car in, when they opened up the motorplex I, in 86, I believe it was, I was the first car to run a 550 there. Really? And I'd never run a 550 before in my life. <laughs> it was one of those runs, it was perfect. I was number one qualifier until Saturday night.
here with another member of uh, Doc Halliday's team. This is Thomas Easley. Uh, why don't you tell us what you do on the car, Thomas? I mainly do the bottom end, but at the shop we'll do everything. You guys do a complete rebuild on these motors at the shop? Oh yeah. Um, how long have you been with Doc? I couldn't tell you when he built the Showtime. Okay, so, boy, 2008, 2009? I believe so. Sound about right. Um, so why don't you walk us through real quick what on a race day when you show up at the pier, what, what do you have to do to get that car ready to go? Pull it out of the trailer, put it uh, take the body off, put it, put it up on jack stands, and uh, put the fuel and oil in it. I saw that after you guys do a warm up that you drop the oil out of it, and that, Gary just told me it was to get the nitro out of it and have fresh oil to go on the track. Well, that we run for warm up, it's 50 weight, and then we put 70 weight in it for a run. Really, that heavy, huh? Yep. And so, then stabilizer and zinc and everything else we throw into it. <laughs> well, I saw, what, what he asked me was, was that blue coming out of there? Yep. Oil's blue? Yeah, they changed it on us. It was, uh, 70 weight was yellow. Oh, well, hey, that's and what we 50 saw. Weight, 50 weight was blue already, and then they changed it to where 70 weight and 50 weight are both blue. So when you guys get back, after you get back uh, from a run, then what are you responsible for? Same same things or? Uh, basically whatever needs to be done. You just say all, all hands on deck kind of deal, yep. huh? We normally would put like six or eight cylinders in the trailer and Oh yeah, no, 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 I was thinking about putting six or nine nuts on it. Then I thought, well, don't go out and have to blow the tires off again. But it looked good going down there. Yeah. Had nice big flames. You kind of touched on how you and Jerry Newman got together. If it has, has Jerry Newman been doing anything else uh, did he do anything else in that time period where you, you stepped away for a while? Um, yeah, he was kind of doing a little work with different, a couple different guys here and there. I don't remember exactly who or which at the time, but um, he was putzing around with some stuff, and he's doing that now. He's got some guys that he talks to on the phone and tries to help them do setups for for guys that are starting out. And he was a big deal with the uh, the Pontiac Firebird uh, that went in the fives at 250 miles an hour, which is the fastest Pontiac, because that had a real Pontiac motor in it. Yeah. So they had a struggle with it for a while, but they stuck, the guys stuck with it. And, and actually that was their goal to be the world's fastest Pontiac. Um, and Jerry worked with them very closely to get to that point. <laughs> so you said you blew a body off one time. Um, where was that and what happened? Gainesville. Throttle stuck. And I had to hit the fuel shut off. And, you, and you rarely ever pray for a car motor to blow up. Yeah. But I was praying for it to blow up because it kept going faster and faster and faster. And, and it was going down the track and it was well over 200 when it finally blew the body off. And you know, because there's, I couldn't. There's nothing I could do to stop it. It was a runaway. You know, there's, the brakes. Were, in those days, we didn't have carbon fiber, which even at that, carbon fiber wouldn't have held it because it's, you know, it's got so much power and it just motored down there and the throttle stuck wide open. So, push the fuel shut off and go. It's going to lean out pretty quick and go boom, and it did. You didn't get hurt, did you? No, no, that's fine. No giant fireball out of it. No. You had the fuel shut off, didn't you? Yeah, I had the fuel shut off, so it just exploded, you know, just shut everything off and died. Well. <laughs> I've only burned one car to the ground, so. I don't think I'd want to be involved in that. It wasn't a, it wasn't a great day. No. I, you know, from a team owner perspective, that's got to just be dollar bill signs going out the window. Yeah, because that's when I bought the car from Hoover. That became they, a lot of people called it the, the taxi cab car because it had this checkerboard all over it, and uh, it was a car that Tom had bought from the super shops. It was the one of the cars that uh, Ed had McCullough had driven. Yeah. 
So Tom had bought it. I brought it back from California on top of my trailer because we were out there running and brought it back. And then he was racing me with the car that day. It was the only time he ever raced the car. And it had Showtime on the side and this checkerboard thing. So I, bl I blew mine up, it caught fire, threw the rods out, caught fire, burned the body off it. Hoover was down, he had shut off for some reason, but he coasted down with me. And then he jumped out of the car and I got out of the car and and the, the rescue kid came down and thought we were both nuts because we ran back into the fire and ripped the body off so we'd save the chassis and and whatever we could of the motor parts. And so then I went back to the pit area and I said, all right, Hoover, you've been wanting me to buy that car forever. I said, let's make a deal. We made a deal in the trailer about a half an hour after I burned up mine and went and picked it up on um, Monday night. We went over to his shop and picked it up. And he, he had another car he was running. He just had bought the second car for some reason. I don't know why. And so I went over to uh, his shop on Monday, picked up that car, took it back. We just took the show time off. And uh, Cliff Anderson made me a decal to go on there that said Telstar on it. And that's all we did to it. Bought the whole car, rolling chassis, and all we had to do is we had a spare motor. We stuck that in. I raced in, in uh, down in uh, Marion, South Dakota, with Thunder Valley the next weekend. What I'm really finding out is this is a really close knit fraternity of guys, and you guys have a really cool relationship that spans the whole country. <laughs> Pretty much. It, it's some neat stuff, and I, you know, Nitro Revival. I'm sure when you get out there, yeah. it's going to be that whole fraternity yeah. together again. Tom had borrowed, he was having a new car built or something, and he, had, he, had, he was running HRA, and I think that was before I ran to HRA, and he had to run in, I believe, in Tucson. So he borrowed my whole deal. Oh, Truck, really? trailer, car, motors, the whole nine yards. Calls me after the first run of qualifying, he says, I'm qualified, but I blew your motor up. I said, okay. He said, uh, what do you want me to do? And I said, well, I guess you might as well put the spare in it. He said, okay, already did. So I knew that's what you're gonna say. <laughs> now let's see what Doc does after the race. <laughs> We haven't had any of these yet. I heard it's world famous bacon wrap shrimp. That's Pretty much, yeah. World famous. Uh, I've made over 29,000. Wow. Let's talk of nostalgia here. Jerry uh, is part of a car show that happens in what town? Lannan. 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 I should know where that is. I'm from Wisconsin. It's yeah. over by Sussex. It's just south of us. Yep. Uh, Lannan, Wisconsin. They have a car show. Uh, cars on Main. And it's the last weekend in July. When we get closer to that event, we're going to actually go down there and uh, do some video from down there and hang out and enjoy it. But why don't you tell us how this got started and what happens? Well, in uh, 2005, it was our 75th anniversary of the village of Lannan and uh, I was in charge of putting together some kind of celebration. So uh, I was with uh, a real close friend of mine that we grew up together in Lannan, and uh, we were talking about what we should do for the events and stuff. And he suggested, why don't we do a car show? Because in the 60s, Lannan was a very big hot rod car town. We did a lot of street racing, and we were known, we had... <laughs> large amount of cars we'd go into milwaukee looking for street races <laughs> and so he says well why don't we do a car show and i said, okay that you know that sounds like a good idea so then as part of that 75th event we had a car show and we had 35 cars and a few weeks ago we had over 700. wow so uh yeah that that turned out to be a really big deal and 
a couple of times I had five nitro cars there. Wow. So you don't see a lot of car shows with nitro cars, and we had five of them. That, that's so, a crowd pleaser. You can yeah. see it here. You got Tom Hoover. Yeah. Tom Hoover Showtime. Yeah. And what and car is this? That's you know? the Hoover Dragster. That's the Hoover Dragster. The 1966 okay. Dragster. Yeah. Well. It sounds like a great event, and we're going to be down there next year for this. We're not going to miss it, uh, hanging out. Uh, hopefully, we can talk to some when people I first down there. Going in 73, 74, mat racing was, I mean, you could go no, mat yeah. wherever you wanted. We Gary, Gary. Yeah, we could run three, four days a week if we wanted to. That's crazy. We were, uh, when Charlie still had the Pepsi Urban Charger, I flew to Milwaukee. And we went and we raced in Lexington, Kentucky on Friday night. We raced in Thompson, Ohio on Saturday night in Cayuga, Canada on Sunday afternoon. Wow. <laughs> oh, man. Did you guys do that because you wanted to make a bunch of money or you just loved doing it? I guess it was a combination. I mean, the races were out there. You just like, well, let's do it. We can. Yeah. We were young and dumb. Yeah. You know, we had a lot of energy. Uh, could you make some good money doing it? Well, guys could support it. Guys were making living, living off it, doing it. Yeah. You didn't have to work a day job. You could just be a match racer and make yeah. a good living at it. Yeah. I, I, I miss, I miss those days. I know all you racers miss those days too. Yeah, it was, it was fun just going to all these little tracks and people were so, you know, so into it. It was just, it was crazy. But, and and. In those days, we would think nothing about, you know, because we had booking guys that booked races. And they'd call up, uh, like when I was driving for Shifsky, and call them up and say, um, hey, we got, a, we got a race for you, Hartford, Connecticut. Can you go? And Shifsky go, oh, yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, I, I had a job at that time. I was working for a company called uh, Unisys, uh, part of Sperry Corporations. And I'd... You know, I could take off because I had vacation time, so I'd, I'd use my vacations on Fridays and Mondays. And we'd go to Hartford, Connecticut for a weekend. Houston, Texas, Dallas, Texas. Oh, yeah, we think nothing about it. And then be back to work on Monday. I'd get back to work and go to work at noon on Monday. <laughs> With a sleeper on the truck. And You guys were crazy. Blood is for punishment. No, oh, tell me about it. You said Dallas, motor, that Billy Myers track down there? Yeah. That you said you were the first one. first one. Yeah. At that time when I ran the 550, I was the fourth car in history we ran a five-second run. And nobody thought that was going to happen. The big joke was everybody be calling up saying, hey, guess who's number one qualifier? I was the last one on the list, they'd guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was, well, see, your name didn't end up to be who instead of Marvin Graham. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Marvin and I are good friends, too. Yeah. They ran out of my shop for a while. Oh, did they really? When, when they were, whenever they were in this, and when they were running the two cars, Mark Danicus and uh, Lucille Lee, they, yeah. you know, they were running some race around here, so they hung out here for. Oh no, I think they're probably here at least a month or so. Oh really? Marvin, <laughs> yeah. I, well, I love Marvin. He's a great yeah. guy. Oh yeah, Marvin's a great guy. And then he became, he was doing the movie stuff, and he was the, the camera truck guy. Yeah. And then they came here to film Mighty Ducks. Oh, really? Yeah. So that's, that was filmed over here in St. Paul or one of the places. Well, I had a bar downtown Minneapolis at the time. Well, they needed a place for their catering guys to clean all their dishes and stuff after the day was over. So they made a deal with me to come to my bar at night. They would come in and use my kitchen to clean up all their stuff to get ready for the next day. So There's, a story just did. There's a story Marvin never told me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was he was here. I think two different times that he came here and and uh, was here for part of the movie stuff. Well, so. that's really cool. I guess we'll finish this up. What are you up to these days other than hitting a few races here and there? And that's kind of it. It keeps me kind of out of trouble and <laughs> um, just it's you know I try to go to a few races or go to some events. We do we do some car show cackle car shows too. So um, Jerry does a big one. We just did one here at the last Sunday in July, and that was in Lannan, Wisconsin. And uh, they had over 700 cars show up for this car show. And we'd go in there and we'd cackle the car twice. And we had the Tom Hoover dragster there too. So 
and I started both of them. Um, so I jumped from one to the other and did the startup on both those cars. And um, that was a really big turnout. I, they said that it's the biggest turnout they've ever had. So, Well, we, and this is an annual event? They do this yeah, every year? Yeah, every year. Yeah, we did it. We've done this uh, other than last year. It's the only year we haven't done it. And I think we've done it for seven or eight years in a row. When Jerry first started it, it's a, it's a city project. When Jerry first started it, it, he said the first year they had 35 cars show up for the car show. Yeah. This year they had over 700. Oh.